I've experienced like sharp stabbing pains, blunt pains. Sometimes it feels like I will have my leg in, in a vice and someone's just tightening it. It just makes it seem more close. I'm, I'm going to die, so it's something serious. So those are the things that I pay attention to. And you just know I have to rest, otherwise this could lead onto a crisis. But yeah, it has a huge impact on my mental health. Sickle cell disease predominantly affects those of African and Caribbean backgrounds in the UK. Meet Janika Leah. Like most sickle cell patients, Janika was diagnosed at birth. As sickle cell is a hereditary condition, both of her parents were carriers of the sickle cell trait. Today, Janika is an award-winning children's author for her book, My Friend Jen, A Little Different. Her book is the first of its kind targeted to teach small children about how they can stay healthy. My childhood growing up was really fun. There were times where I would know that there were certain things I couldn't do, but I didn't really know why. A lot of my complications from sickle cell didn't really come until I was a little bit older and maybe like a teenager. When I was 13, I had a stroke, um, but they didn't, I think it was eventually diagnosed when I was 14 and then I had to start having blood transfusions. So that was my teenage years. Then I had problems with my gallbladder so I ended up having like gallstones and I had to have my gallbladder removed. Mentally I would say sickle cell affects me a lot. It's one of those conditions where you have to be mentally strong in order to carry on because it's so easy to just kind of give up. It's so easy to wake up, be in pain and then just decide like oh, I'm just not going to do anything today. The, the difficult thing is with sickle cell, especially like where I am and how I've grown up, we haven't really had an on-call kind of like psychologist or counsellor or anyone to kind of give us that sort of therapy. So I don't really have people that I can talk to outside of like my family and my friends. And sometimes I feel like you need that because you don't want, you can speak to your family and your friends about things, but then there's certain things that might make them feel guilty. So I feel like I'm going to get emotional, sorry. But yeah, it has a huge impact on my mental health. Janika won the 2017 Young Inspirational Author Award for her book, My Friend Jen, A Little Different, as well as a recognition award from the sickle cell charity Oscar Birmingham for her extensive efforts to help draw attention to the needs of sickle cell patients. She also conducted two international book donations in both Gambia and Nigeria to ensure her book could educate other children across the globe. I get messages from like parents who have children with sickle cell saying like, you know, thank you for writing the book and how their children are just a lot more confident. They bring the book to school. So I wanted young children that have sickle cell now to just feel like, you know, they can openly say, this is what I have. This is what happens. This is how you can help me to stay well and they can just be confident in you know living with it because it doesn't have to stop you from doing anything that you want to do meet a star A-Star is a grime artist from East London, making hit tracks such as 180 and Chosen Ones. As well as being prevalent in the Christian hip-hop scene, he has teamed up with NHS Give Blood to produce a track which captures his lifetime struggle with sickle cell. You don't hear about, so hear me out. From as young as five getting rushed to the hospital, I still remember clearly wow. I can still hear the screams, still hear the shouts. Blue lights and ambulance noises, wheelchair and oxygen mask. I got to be daft if I plan to avoid it. Can't handle the voices telling me calm down but don't know hidden pain was uh, a track that i've always wanted to write um, i've always been someone that's been opening my music you know with my faith and my life and my struggles um, and one day i was with my producer alex elliott and we yeah we he, he started playing the keys and i was like i like that and then continued with the keys on the song and i said i've got a perfect idea for this um, and that's when i wrote hidden pain literally the two verses i wrote in the space of an hour 
and yeah, that's how the track was made. I wanted the song to wake people up. I wanted people to be shocked by it. Um, I wanted it to hit a, a nerve and an emotion that only things like music can hit. Um, and not just because it's music, but because it's someone's real life. And I, I believe that um, in the UK, um, there's not one black person that doesn't know of or know directly a person that suffers with sickle cell. Um, so if you hear it, it will kind of first time make you uncomfortable. A lot of people say that I haven't. Some people have messaged me and said I haven't watched your video yet. I can't find myself. To, I can't bring myself around to watching it. And I'm telling them, watch it, man. Watch it. It's good. You know, it's it's it will wake you up. It, it will bring awareness, and that's what I want to do. I want people to wake up, understand that this is something that affects our community, um, and we need to help each other. University student Stefan Taylor defied all odds by completing his university degree with first class honours after having to take frequent absences due to complications with his sickle cell. When my sickle cell is triggered through cold, through overexertion, through um, stress and infections and dehydration, my red blood cells would start to change and they will go from the normal round shape that they're supposed to be to, into a sickle shape. And because they go into that sickle shape, then a crisis occurs. So a crisis is the, a painful episode that I'll have anywhere in my body where the circulation has stopped or isn't flowing properly. And because of that, the pain can be anywhere. And I will have to have uh, quite strong painkillers in order to relieve the pain, I have to drink lots of water and there'll be times where the medication that I have at home wouldn't help the crisis so I'll have to go into a hospital. At the moment I feel like there is now more research. Um, I've spoken to research groups who are looking at designing clinical trials and bringing them, to, bringing them to the UK. A lot of the research that's happening is in America or in, in Europe, but well, I don't feel like the NHS is doing much. The Sickle Cell Society is an organisation based in East London who are working with both Janika, Astar and Stefan, along with many others, to produce a podcast series. So I'm currently on my way to Croydon in London for the launch of the Self Over Sickle Project and one of them is including a podcast so at this launch event we're basically just going to be launching the project talking about what it's all about how people can get involved and we'll actually have a panel and be recording one of the episodes for the podcast as well so it should be good <laughs> This is Team's Rhythm. The UK's first podcast on sickle cell, actually. There was one in America, um, but we have the first UK one. Um, but I think more so it just shows um, how much in our generation as young people, there's so many ways we can raise awareness um, about sickle cell and about issues that affect our community. Yes, we're basically letting people know that you're not on your own. With sickle cell, it is a predominantly black disease, but just like mental health in the same community, 